Thanks very much for the opportunity to testify on the challenges of legal education in my country, Brazil. First Brazilian law schools were founded in 1827. The main purpose was to staff the state, that is, preparing and training leading politicians, lawyers, judges and public officials to run a country that had become independent from the Portuguese rule only five years earlier, in 1822. In this context, producing scientific knowledge and academic research were not priorities at all. After almost 200 years, as in many developing countries, legal education in Brazil is largely characterized by a formalistic, doctrinal and monodisciplinary approach. These three features are deeply embedded in Brazilian legal culture and have complex consequences that become more and more visible as law becomes increasingly transnational. In Brazil, students enter the university directly from high school at a very young age, being 17 or 18, 18 years old. Some general courses in social sciences, such as theory of the state, sociology, political economy or ethics, are usually offered at the beginning of their undergraduate program in law, but they are very poor substitutes for a prerequisite solid cultural background. Rather than learning what law does, how it works and how it shapes society, Brazilian students tend to be introduced to the subject in an encyclopedic manner through merely descriptive lectures on the norms that underpin the constitution, the statutes and the codes. In other words, the immense majority of Brazilian law students are repeatedly taught to conceive legal norms as abstract propositions with no clear or direct connection with the real world. Law is often described as, as an autonomous and exogenous system with its own complicated language, rationale and methods. This is basically why Brazilian legal education is formalistic. Brazil has more than 1,200 law schools, probably more than any other country. As a general rule, faculty members are part-time professionals who spend most of their time as practicing lawyers, prosecutors and judges with very little concern for teaching techniques. A common assumption among faculty is if you are an excellent lawyer, shouldn't you naturally be a good law professor? The great majority of Brazilian legal scholars doesn't pursue academic research and is not interested in participating in policy debates or in international discussions. It's no surprise, therefore, that lawyers have been quickly losing ground when it comes to providing explanations and solutions for the social and economic dilemmas Brazil must now overcome. Moreover, Brazilian legal scholars reproduce the centrality of doctrinal opinions when they teach. If in Brazil law is a closed system, the oracle providing right answers to legal problems is the law professor with his or her authority and status. Doctrinal opinions are typically confronted by other doctrinal opinions and not by criticism, questions, interaction, facts, or empirical evidence. This is basically why doctrinal teaching through authoritative lectures is prevalent in Brazil. Also, legal education is based upon the assumption that law is a science with its own methods and scientific criteria. Law is considered a self-sufficient system to deal with its own with its own challenges and as a result lawyers have been unable to establish a consistent dialogue with the social sciences although very fashionable as an abstract idea interdisciplinary research is still uncommon in brazil at the same time open texture principles such as dignity equality or equal concern have acquired a fashionable appeal in recent years, but they are employed with little consistency. 
Brazilian legal education has been repeatedly diagnosed as facing a severe crisis. Nonetheless, things haven't changed much. How can such a problematic and crystallized status quo be reformed in a country that in the middle of a global crisis is becoming increasingly important? How can legal education be reshaped to meet the needs of a quickly transforming society? How can the law ultimately work as a democratic tool to promote development outcomes? Some recent initiatives in Sao Paulo or in Rio de Janeiro, for instance, have tried to tackle these structural problems with promising results. But unfortunately, unfortunately there are only a few. And since legal education is part of legal culture, there is a need for a deeper mentality shift in order to change the ways in which law schools are structured. In my opinion, there are some critical steps to be taken to induce and promote structural change. Young and future scholars are responsible for implementing them. First, elite public and private law schools should take the lead and go full-time both for students and most of their faculty. This is a key step in changing the widespread belief that law is to be actually learned outside the law school in the real life. Although very difficult, this is not impossible and has the potential to break the vicious cycle according to which law schools supply a workforce to the market through some sort of elusive education outsourcing. Positive spillover could result from law schools employing more full-time faculty. They could be more applied research, more empirical investigation, more debate, more case law study, and higher publishing standards. Second, full-time law students should begin their undergraduate studies by consistently studying social sciences. It would be therefore great if Brazilian law students could mingle with other social science students or professors and complete one or two introductory years in such an environment and only then start studying law. Internship in law firms and other organizations should be allowed in the last year only, which is the fifth year. Third, the huge number of mandatory classes should be drastically reduced and complemented by a wider variety of optional courses so that the encyclopedic style adopted in Brazil is abundant. To implement this, it is worth noting that there is no need to change or even amend the existing federal regulation on education. Basically, this is a matter of law schools reorganizing themselves toward a more rational curriculum. Fourth, in my view, law schools, particularly public ones, should begin searching for techniques of describing law as a toolbox to build and shape institutions for development. This does not mean viewing legal education as a means to political goals, nor does it mean only seeing law instrumentally. The underlying proposition is to highlight from the very beginning the fact that law plays the primary role of designing good institutions, which are in turn part of a context and a culture that, if not able to be entirely transformed by the legal system, can certainly be influenced by it. I am an optimistic person and hope to see these changes taking place in Brazil soon.